Hello and welcome to DigiLink's course Introduction to Python for Linguists. My name is Petra Bago. This lesson covers some built-in functions in Python. The idea behind functions is to write a piece of code once and then use it every time we need it. In that sense, a function is a sequence of statements that performs a certain task. It is a subprogram called within the main program. It can be called every time we need to perform a certain task. Functions can also be called subroutines, subprograms, procedures, or just routines. We have mentioned methods as being a type of function. Methods are functions that are associated with objects or object classes. A function can take zero or more arg arguments as input. And when executed, it can return zero or more arguments as output. There are three kinds of functions. There are built-in functions. Those are the functions that come with the program. In this lesson, we are going to talk about several functions of this kind. Then there are functions in libraries. Uh, those functions someone else wrote and we are free to use them. We can use them by importing them. And the third kind of functions are user-defined functions. We are the ones that write these kinds of functions and we can import them and use them when we need them. The types of functions we are going to cover are the so-called conversion functions. Conversion functions, well, convert values from one data type to another. The three functions we will talk about are the integer function, the float function, and the string function. An integer function, or int, returns an integer object. As an input argument, it can take a numerical value, like for example a floating point number. Also, it can take a string containing an integer literal. The syntax of a function is the name of the function, in this case int, and in round brackets is the object we call the function on. For example, 7.3. In the examples you can see that the int function called on 7.9 is 7. This function does not round the numbers, it just returns the integer part of the floating point number. If we call the function on a string containing digits 1 and 0, it will return a 10. However, if we call the function on a string that contains digit that we see them as a floating point number, it returns an error. Try making this mistake in idle and look at the error it returns. Additionally, the function takes boolean data types as input. What do you think would be the result if we call the function on true? The next conversion function is float. This function returns a floating point number object. As an input argument, it takes numerical types like integers, for example, and it takes a string containing a numeral literal. For example, it takes a 7 and converts it to 7.0. This function is useful when we have two integers and have to do division. We can convert one of the integers to a float for the result to be a floating point data type. If we convert 7 from an integer to a float and then divide it by 2, we get 3.5. The same thing happens if we convert the 2. However, look at the last example on the slide. What happens when we call the function float on the expression 7 divided by 2? It returns 3.0. Why? Well, because the first thing that is done in this expression is the division of two integers. The result of dividing two integers is an integer type. So the result of the division is 3. And when we call the float function on 3, the function returns 3.0. So 
So be careful that you don't call the function on the whole operation, but just on the one operand. The next conversion function we will cover is string function. You have probably guessed right, this function returns a string object. It can take a numerical value and turn the value into string literals. For example, it takes 7.9 and turns it into a string containing three characters, a 7, a period, and a 9. And those are the three fu conversion functions we covered. The next function is not a conversion function, but we will cover it nevertheless because it can be a very useful function. And that is the type function. The type function returns information what is the data type of the object it is called on. It returns the data type of an object. So when you are not sure what is the data type of a variable or an object, you can test it with this function. For example, function type called on 7.9 will return a message that the type of our object is a float. So in this lesson we have covered three conversion functions, integer, float and string, and function type, which tells us the type of the object it is called on. Let's do some exercises.